Hello and welcome back to this uh, course on microsystems fabrication by advanced uh, manufacturing processes lecture 18. Uh, so we will quickly recap what we tried to learn in the last lecture. Uh, here as you see we uh, tried to plot the workpiece profile into the tool profile uh, so that we can do it in a 2D and a 3D uh, so two-dimensional two and three-dimensional basis. And we saw that if we plot a curve on the uh, with a certain fixed relationship parametric form between x and y, what would be the, the corresponding uh, tool equation or uh, vice versa, provided you have a certain uh, gap, equilibrium gap and a uniform field. We also said that if a surface is made up of many topologies of different regular surfaces connected together, then it is a good idea to uh, individually replicate the corresponding part of the tool piece surface based on whatever functional relationship exists into the part of the work piece surface, assuming the constant field criteria and then integrating the overall surface to have a uh, the whole complex profile, uh, where close form expression of electric fields are available particularly for regular cases, uh, there is no problem as such the whole surface can be taken into picture. We also learned about electrolyte flow and the designing of these flows and uh, in that context I would like to mention that the most important part in a ECM is to see if the tool is uh, designed for the flow to cover all the zone of uh, between the workpiece and the tool surface. Okay, if there is some residual area which is left over from the flow field, there is a tendency of uh, the machining to be uneven, non-uniform and then the die sinking process or basis of the ECM uh, does not come into picture. We also looked at some properties uh, which are desirable in electrolytes. For example, uh, they should be as non-toxic as possible, they should be able to allow charge transport in a smooth manner, thus precipitating whatever emanates from the anode, uh, the workpiece side, so that it can be carried away as a debris material, then should be amenable to uh, slightly higher temperatures and uh, it should also be less viscous, as, vis as less viscous as possible, so that there are diffusion, uh, you know, uh, based flow of debris into the uh, the flowing fluid, so on and so forth, and a variety of other properties like thermal stability, electrochemical stability, uh, etc., should be analyzed when we talk about different properties. We also looked at some standard metals and the electrolytes uh, which are used therein for the purpose of uh, ECM, and then we designed certain electrochemical machining plants looking into the very basic requirements of such ECM uh, units. Uh, the basic requirement is a rigid stage and a rigid workpiece uh, tool holder, which is uh, important because uh, the gaps which are maintained uh, while in equilibrium of an ECM process is typically of the order of a few microns, few tens of microns. And then uh, it necessitates uh, the, the surface properties uh, become more prominent, it necessitates the viscous forces over uh, the inertial forces, so there is a dominance and uh, therefore because of the viscous forces there are large pressures which are felt and uh, the tool should be able to handle such pressures without getting warped or wobbled uh, and therefore uh, the stage needs to be very very rigid uh, while feeding the tool. We also learnt about uh, the various aspects of uh, the electrochemical machining system as such for example you have to have a slurry tank, you have to have a process of filtration where the primary uh, debris which comes out can be uh, removed selectively and then you know uh, the slurry can be recirculated back into the system at a certain velocity. Uh, there should also be a bleeding mechanism where whatever slurry is going in the corresponding amount of air which is closed in that enclosure, uh, tank like enclosure where ECM is carried out should be bleeded out. Uh, we also should try to avoid as far as possible uh, metals in contact with the electrolyte other than the workpiece zone. So everything whatever is holding the electrolyte should be properly coated so that there is no electrochemical machining action on the same although the most amenable to such actions is the tool holder and so therefore proper coating of these tool holders are needed for, to prevent any stray machining to take place because of splashes etc as is the normal case with such electrolytes. So wherever there is a field and wherever there is an electrolyte there is a possibility of machining which gets introduced. So today we will be looking into a slightly different aspect of ECM and uh, the other corollary processes or associated processes like uh, electro stream drilling, ESD or electrochemical grinding ECG and what are the basis 
uh, what, are, what are the basic mechanisms associated with material removal in such processes. Of course, the primary mechanism is electrochemical machining, but there are certain other uh, important aspects which are coupled to the ECM process in order to formulate these new processes which exist. And for microsystems application, these learning these uh, nitty gritty of uh, the associated processes of the electrochemical machining is very important from a standpoint of manufacture. So, let us look at these processes and to begin with we start with just electrochemical drilling operation. So, the fundamentally this process is illustrated here. So, you have a tubular electrode which is used as a cathode in this case which is also the tool. Okay, so, this is the tool side. The electrolyte is pumped from the center of the tool and exists throughout the side machining gaps. So, therefore, the electrolyte is transported here in this axis of the tool and it emanates sidewise. So, it goes between the work piece and the tool gap and the machining gap which is formulated here. Okay. So, it uh, basically also gives the question of how much protection you should give in terms of shielding the electric field which is between this uh, electrode here and the tool surface. So, you have to provide proper insulation in the sides. So, that there is no stray machining effect which happens because of sides of the electrode. Now, it is a drilling operation meaning thereby this hole that you want to drill is a through hole. So, definitely <coughs> it is a high aspect ratio structure that we are trying to fabricate uh, in a bulk micro machining sense across the thickness of the material. And the machining occurs at uh, high current densities in the frontal interior electrode gap between the work piece and the tool face, this gap right here. And of course, as you know here because of this uh, presence of the uh, flow dynamics across the emanating surface of the tool of the electrolyte, there is a ridge which is automatically formulated. Okay. So, because uh, this is a sort of uh, place where the fields may not be that homogeneous or uniform. The fields may exist between for example, these two sides. Okay. So, the electric fields and the current densities are highest here and the field reaching here because of these electrodes here may be smaller in value and therefore, this region is uh, depreciated of the overall electric field that it faces. Okay. So, there is a tendency of this ridge to develop and that is only because of this coaxial portion uh, done in the tool for the electrolyte flow. Side electrochemical dissolution acts laterally between the side walls of the tool and the component uh, somewhere in these regions here. So, the side gaps on both sides which exist is where the side electrochemical dissolution would happen. And uh, let us say if you want to produce a certain hole diameter C D, this overall uh, machining dia which comes out would be definitely more than C D. Okay. So, if this is the machining dia, so the machining dia which comes out is greater than C D in this particular case because of side machining. So, and the C D is calculated by the following uh, manner. So, if supposing D W is the work piece dia which eventually gets formulated and D T is the tool dia. So, definitely this C D or the side machining gap happens because of the difference between D W and D T. So, D W minus D T is C D. So, electrochemical drilling produces uh, diameters ranging from about 1 to 20 millimeter and uh, using feed rates from 1 to 5 millimeter per minute. Typically, that is what the range is and for high machining accuracy and smaller diametral oversize, high feed rates are recommended. So, under such condition, high removal rates and better surface quality are also ensured.
So, the method in which you feed the electrolyte sometimes influences uh, the overcut uh, as such and uh, the overcut is basically the amount of C D which is basically the difference between the, uh, the work piece dia which gets finally formulated and the tool dia that you are using. Okay. So, for example, in this uh, regard the reverse electrolyte flow mode under back pressure reduces the overcut. So, if instead of uh, making the electrolyte flow in this direction, you are trying to flow the electrolyte in a reverse direction entering, entering from the side and going towards the axial center, you will definitely have a, a smaller C D or a, a, long, a smaller overcut of the, the hole that you want to produce. Uh, the only thing you have to ensure that there has to be a back pressure of about 0 0.6 to 2 mega Pascal for this. So, what it does is that it procedure flushes away the gaseous products of electrolysis for machining uh, gap without reaching the side machining zone and uh, therefore, uh, whatever conductivity changes locally would happen because of the dissolved gases, those changes will not happen and so the machining will be more precise because of the back pressure, it ensures that the gas kind of oozes out of uh, the whole electro uh, electrolyte tank as such. So, that is uh, one aspect of it uh, electrochemical drilling. Uh, now, one thing which is important here to mention is that the, the increase in the gap pressure uh, as you have seen before between the work piece and the tool. Okay, so, this gap uh, raises the electrolyte conductivity and it enhances the dissolution process due to increase in machining current naturally because the gases are no longer getting trapped here because there is a back pressure and the gas gets diffused away from the uh, electrolytic system and you are assuming that you are flowing the electrolyte under the back pressure uh, from the side to the center. So, generally what people have found is that this electrolyte back pressure would reduce uh, the flow lines which otherwise happens on a machine surface. Um, for example, you can have a look at uh, the surfaces here which are products of the electrochemical drilling okay. and you can see that there are varied level of surface roughnesses which are achieved because of different uh, current values that you are using. So, if the value of uh, current is 44 amps for example, the roughness is uh, 0.41 microns, if it is 105 amps the roughness is about 0 0.29 microns and if it is 130 amps it is about 0 0.175 microns so on so forth. So, as you are seeing here that if the current density is more or the current per unit area is more that you are pumping in the roughness is overall reducing uh, from 0 0.41 microns to about 0 0.175 microns. So, one aspect is of course, electrolyte back pressure of uh, reduction on the roughness as I have already told and the other aspect is the amount of current that is being used for the purpose of uh, the electrochemical machining. And uh, one uh, again disadvantage a major disadvantage uh, of such a system is that beside the tooling cost, uh, uh, the overall system dynamics if the hydraulic forces are more would go up. Okay. So, the cost of the system also for designing uh, a, a electrochemical system which can handle increased hydraulic forces, increased pressures would be very high. I remember that rigidity aspect of the tool holder etcetera which we discussed while designing the electrochemical machining process. Of course, uh, you need to in, uh, use uh, or, or properly insulate the sides of the the drill the electrochemical machining has the same parameters as any other ECM process. So, if side insulation is not happening then there is a huge amount of C D which is created because of additional uh, electrochemical transport between the side and the uh, tool face itself. And uh, uh, therefore, we can say that uh, use of proper tool insulation would reduce side machining effect and this in turn would limit the widening of the side gap. So, you can have more accurate processes if insulation is proper. So, one important aspect which we have actually studied also while doing this 
theorizing of electrochemical machining and ion transport as we have seen before, is that uh, there are certain passivating agents uh, which you would use from time to time in electro electrolytic solutions, so that you can get a better surface finish. For example, it has been seen that if NaNO3 uh, sodium nitrate solution is used along with salt, salt water, there is an action which creates a smoothening, a self smoothening effect of the surfaces that are produced. And also it can uh, remove process inaccuracies. So, you can have exact size of the, uh, the CD, the overcut, very small amount of overcut and all uh, those processes related to the accuracy of the tool. And the reason why that is so is that the passivating electrolyte is creating generally an ion atmosphere uh, which shields uh, which is which is a which is maybe a non participating uh, ion in the whole process okay nno3 for example is a non participating ion when the electrolyte is nacl uh, and water so normally salt water which is used for the machining of uh, iron work pieces okay fe so if it is non participating the goal that 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 particular solution passivating solution would have is it would produce a, uh, a high density field as such where the ion of interest that is being machined would easily uh, get emanated out. And there may not be a, 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 a problem about uh, getting influenced by the, uh, the fields that are emanated from the workpiece or the tool as such. Okay, so, you are creating a situation which is free for the ion of interest to move freely. That means, it comes out into the solution, does the precipitation everything, free of the fields that are imposed to this ion by either the tool or the work piece. So, that kind of a goal is being uh, achieved by a passivating electrolyte and the purpose of it is also to create a large background field in the solution itself. So, that uh, the effects of the tool and the work piece gets minimized that way. So, as we know that as we have seen that uh, electrolyte flow definitely in this particular case in drilling particularly has uh, a huge impact on the process overcut. Okay. So, if the flow rates are uh, slightly higher, the velocity is higher and the overcut may be more. If the velocity is uh, an optimum best, the overcut may be lesser, so on and so forth. So, there are certain other aspects of this machining. For example, the machining current increases proportionately to the tool feed rate. Uh, if uh, the tool approaches the workpiece at a higher speed and the machining current would be more because uh, you can obviously think of it because uh, the amount of field which is created is also inversely proportional to the tool electrode gap and as this gap is reducing in a faster manner thereby meaning the tool is approaching faster to the workpiece. The, the amount of increase in the electric field because of that approach also is more and subsequently field and current density are connected by an equation J equals uh, field times of K, uh, where K is the conductivity. If the conductivity is assumed to be the same uh, in that situation, we can say that the current density or ion transport would be more if the field is more. Okay, so, the rate of approach uh, with the reduction of distance between the workpiece and the tool, thereby increasing the electric field ensures greater current densities, which would then uh, machine at a higher machining rate or material removal rate. So, there are uh, certain ill effects which take place particularly in electrochemical drilling process. For example, one uh, such uh, undesirable effect is sparking and uh, sparking typically takes place when the tool advance rate towards the work piece is greater than the anosic resolution rate. So, uh, you already know from the electrochemical machining theory that if the tool is approaching the work piece. Uh, there is one aspect of the tool getting dissolved, so that the surface or the work piece getting dissolved, so that the surface of the work piece recedes away from the tool and then there is the other aspect of the tool getting fed in. And the overall uh, equilibrium happens when the amount of or the rate of at which the work piece surface is dissolving is uh, or the linear rate at least is same as the feed rate, that is how you calculate. So, if there is a difference as such because of a fastly approaching tool or a rapidly approaching tool, if there is a difference in this rate of dissolution, then there would be a tendency of the two surfaces to touch each other. And even the, when it comes to just about touching, there is this sparking phenomena, which is essentially a discharge, an ionic discharge, 
which would happen because of the uh, very small hills and valleys produced on both the surfaces that is the tool and the workpiece surfaces and they are getting in very very close proximity to each other. So, the field is so high that it boils off the electrons from these small hills and valleys and that results in a sparkling. So, you have a uh, tendency of sparking uh, particularly at a higher advance rate tool advance rate where this rate is much much more than the dissolution rate of the workpiece. And we should not go towards a higher tool advance rate by the by because the process uh, is disturbing and uh, there is a huge amount of impact on the power source because of this parking and uh, we should by and large avoid that in case of electrochemical machining. So, it can da cause damage particularly to the tool and the workpiece. So, of whatever uh, has been experimentally determined there exists uh, this empirical relationship between uh, the diametral oversize C D which is actually equal to this workpiece dia minus tool dia we have just seen it in the last uh, example the last schematic and the gap voltage between the frontal end of the tool and the, the workpiece surface as such this is V. Uh, particularly for a particular feed rate let us say if A is the feed rate in that case uh, empirically it has been determined by experimental observation that the C D what happens is uh, proportional to the power of voltage to the power 0 0.74 minus 0 0.056 A. So, this uh, A is basically in millimeters per minute. So, that is uh, that is about uh, what we have for electrochemical drilling process. The next uh, example that I would like to consider is uh, another corollary or an extension of the electrochemical machining and it is called ECG or electrochemical grinding. And uh, let me uh, just recall a little bit about what conventional grinding uh, typically does. Okay. So, conventional grinding is uh, uh, a very uh, fine machining process which in general produces a superior surface finish of the components. And uh, the conventional grinding is typically used as a finishing operation on most of the components. Uh, that are sent for grinding because their dimensional tolerance as such is low. But uh, the dimensional tolerance gets significantly affected with uh, associated problems like burr, burrs or comparatively large heat affected zone or thermal residual stresses which would create a sort of breakdown of the surface structure right. Because grinding is a multiple cutting tool with a lot of abrasive particles which are embedded onto a matrix which rotates with respect to a workpiece and uh, there is a heavy amount of uh, deformation on the surface plastic deformation on the surface which happens because of uh, the small abrasive grains continually hitting the surface uh, at a very small depth of cut. Okay. So, in fact, uh, the grinding is an operation where you get mostly splinters coming out which means that the metal which is emanating is so small that it gets oxidized and burnt away as it goes. Uh, out of the surface. So, therefore, uh, in a normal mechanical grinding as such you can say that uh, although it is a high tolerance high high you know super finish. So, basically lower tolerances can be achieved using that grinding, but then this dimension uh, dimensional tolerances are significantly associated with these different problems burrs heat affected zone of the workpiece or residual stresses which is there. So, the surface gets modified because of these problems. Now, in order to uh, take care of such problems in a conventional grinding uh, people have switched on to electrochemical grinding or ECG which is actually a process where a, a, at least a part of the material removal which takes place is by electrochemical dissolution and as such the surface finish would be much more uh, in case of ECG than in case of a conventional grinding system mechanical grinding system. So, we can say that electrochemical grinding uh, process has mostly these defects taken care of and um, uh, you can get anodic work pieces which are mostly free of burrs because of the ECG process. So, during electrochemical grinding uh, the material is removed by mostly as I told you electrochemical dissolution okay, which is about 90 percent of the overall material and then a little bit by mechanical abrasive action which is about only 10 percent of the 
uh, the material removal. So, one has to design the tool system in a manner so that the dissolution is at such a rate that it uh, removes 90 percent of the material, work material at a very high rate. And by the time uh, some abrasive action, mechanical abrasion action starts taking place already a lot of material has been dissolved away. So, uh, that is how you have to design the, the ECG or the electrochemical grinding process. So, one uh, very important and significant aspect of ECG that is that the workpiece and the grinding tool both have to be conductive in nature, uh, because uh, it is a it is a electron flow process. Okay. So, you cannot have uh, one of the components uh, non-conductive okay, or insulating in nature, both of them have to be essentially metallic as far as the surfaces go and therefore, the, the ECG tools uh, so created are having this component ensured that they have overall a high conductivity uh, on the surface. Not all grinding tools are conductive in nature, but at least the electrochemical grinding tool is designed in a manner, so that it has high conductivity on the surface. So, the electrolyte is circulated in a ECG process and there should have, there have to have, so it has to have an effective recirculation system, which includes a, a flow supply of the electrolyte and also a flow filtration system, where whatever uh, residue of the process comes out as dissolved electrolyte and the precipitate which is coming out for a precipitate of machining that has to be somehow taken away from the, uh, the electrolyte for recirculating it back into the process. And uh, we have seen that this uh, sodium chloride and a passivating agent sodium nitrate and NO3 is typically used most of the time for ECM processes. So, we can say that in this ECG process also a similar um, composition can be given. Uh, as I already illustrated earlier, the role of a passivating electrolyte is to create a high field, so that as such the ions which come out do not get influenced by the workpiece in the tool surface. So, if we look at the basic process mechanics in an electrochemical grinding operation, it is uh, represented in the schematic here. So, you have a grinding wheel, which is uh, almost similar to a conventional grinding system. And uh, here, as I already illustrated, the bonding material is not any epoxy uh, or any non-conducting system. It has to be essentially a electrically conductive binding material to make the, uh, the ECG wheel. So, the electrolyte is supplied through the IEG or the inter electrode gap. Here in this particular case, this gap right here is the IEG or the inter electrode gap and that happens between the wheel and the work piece. So, the work the gap here is basically between this wheel ECG wheel and the work piece. So, one more aspect is the height of these uh, abrasive particles which are bonded on to the, the metallic wheel. Uh, the height sticks out to just about an extent where uh, it is equal to the inter electrode gap. Okay. So, for one instance of operation, there is a cell which is formulated between let us say the two abrasive grains which are there on the surface, the work piece and the matrix, the conducting matrix binding the grains on the wheel side. So, there is, a, there is a small electrochemical cell, a local electrochemical cell which is created in this manner between the ECG wheel and the work uh, piece. So, you have to ensure that the height of the abrasive particles protruding outside the bonding material um, would be kind of all similar in shape or constant uh, in size and therefore, it has to help in maintaining this inter electrode gap because of the abrasive particles uh, which act as spacers in turn and then it tries to create a compartment holding an electrolyte for high rate of dissolution uh, on a local area between the wheel and the surface in question. So, some facts and figures about this uh, ECG process, uh, a conventional um, you know grinding wheel if you look at the lifetime and then you compare it with the ECG wheel, uh, it is about 10 times more if you consider a electrochemical grinding wheel 
So, the surface, the overall uh, the effective lifetime of such a ECG wheel is much more than a conventional grinding wheel here because you are not doing any mechanical abrasive action. In fact, in conventional grinding you have to do an operation of dressing, uh, where after every grinding process uh, you have to redress the tool in order to start ab initio. And one of the reasons is that most mechanical abrasions result in clogging of uh, the gap between the abrasive particles on the surface of the wheel. In this particular case, that is not the case, because you are also carrying away the precipitate, which is coming out of the material in the electrochemical machining aspect of the ECG. And uh, the tendency or the chances of the, the pockets to get redeposited with the debris is minuscule, because uh, you have designed the electrolyte in a manner, in, in that manner. So, that whatever comes out, uh, goes as a precipitate and not as a deposit. So, therefore, ECG wheels automatically are about 10 times more uh, in terms of their life than the conventional grinding system. So, uh, the uh, effective area in which machining is taking place can be divided into three zones and uh, you can see them marked here as zone 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Okay. Let us see individually what happens in all these three different zones uh, in the ECG process. So, as I already illustrated before, the electrochemical grinding is uh, a combination of electrochemical dissolution as well as mechanical abrasion or removal of material mechanically. Uh, there is a 90 10 combination. So, 90 percent of the material gets removed by ECM process and 10 percent gets removed by mechanical abrasion process. So, there has to be some parity between these zones, so called zone 1, 2, 3 and uh, these different aspects of the ECM and we will just see that uh, zone by zone. So, in zone 1, the material removal is purely due to uh, electrochemical dissolution, uh, because you can see here that the abrasives are hardly in touch or hardly in contact with uh, the work piece. Okay. So, there is no mechanical abrasion as such, which happens in this particular uh, zone, okay, zone 1. So, it is only uh, whatever ion transport is taking place between the work piece surface as such, this surface okay, and the, the tool surface, which is a conducting matrix with particles, abrasive particles. So, rotation of this uh, ECG will of course, helps in uh, drawing the electrolyte into the IEG. So, it is a self priming process. So, even if electrolyte is in the near vicinity and you are moving the grinding heel in a certain direction, it is obvious to assume that whatever small fragments are coming out or sticking out as abrasive particles on the wheel, they would pedal the electrolyte. So, uh, so it is a self paddling action which would happen of the electrolyte which is around here and it gets pushed into the IEG or the inter electrode gap. So, as a result of this uh, whatever machining you are having in zone 1 and whatever reactions electrochemical reactions in zone 1, uh, the products which are coming out of this zone as such start contaminating the electrolyte. Okay. So, in zone 2 and 3 whatever is the available conductivity of the electrolyte which is available here. this conductivity is uh, decreased, because of whatever byproducts like debris and uh, hydrogen gas is packed in zone 1, because of electrochemical dissolution. So, in fact, if there is a counter effect. So, if uh, the sludge is present or the debris is present, the conductivity goes up and if gas uh, products are present or gaseous uh, products of the reactions are present, the conductivity goes down. So, one is exactly counter to the other. So, if sludge is more, then the conductivity is higher. If uh, gases are more, the conductivity is lower. So, the net result is that there is a overall decrease in the value of conductivity of the electrolyte, because uh, gases are emanated and dissolved into the electrolyte system much faster in comparison to the dissolution of the debris, which is solid and which is uh, limited by diffusion kinetics. And therefore, it yields a, uh, a lower value of equilibrium gap. Okay. Equilibrium gap as such, uh, if you may uh, uh, decipher from your previous 
analysis on ECM is really determined by uh, this lambda by f. Okay, so that's what the equilibrium gap is, and lambda is uh, dependent on the conductivity. So if conductivity is low, then the equilibrium gap also automatically falls down. Okay, so the IEG uh, decreases because of a decrease in conductivity. So now. Although the conductivity is lower and there is a certain smaller dissolution rate in zone 2, but uh, as you can see here that between 1 and 2, there is an automatic transition which happens right? and the particles here start to be in direct contact with the workpiece. So, the transition between 1 and 2 zones uh, brings in the additional contact of the abrasive particles with the workpiece. So, there is certain uh, one to one contact between the particles on the wheel and the workpiece surface which happens on the transition between zone 1 and 2 and therefore, a small part of the material that is removed is in forms of chips as well. And the moment it enters into zone 2 as uh, you can very well uh, see here by this blown up schematic or uh, portion of this 2 here, uh, the, because of the direct contact of the, the abrasive particles with respect to the workpiece, there is a formation of these small localized electrochemical cells. And these cells are formulated throughout the width of the grinding wheel, because there are many such particles which are there and in fact, we are talking about a very thin film of electrolyte and this thin film is uh, more amenable to surface effects because the gap is very small and it prefers to stick to the surface because forces of adhesion uh, are more uh, to the surface than the forces of cohesion. It is a very, very small thin film. Okay. So, it, it basically tries to uh, contain itself in that small gap along with the uh, the tool and the workpiece and formulates a small electrochemical cell. So, there are several such cells across the width of the grinding wheel between the workpiece and the grinding surfaces which are formulated in this machining zone 2. So, and therefore, in zone 2 the electrolyte is being forced into the equilibrium gap by the rotational motion of the wheel and uh, therefore, because of these formations of electrochemical cell etcetera, the local electrolyte pressure increases in this part of the IEG. So, the pressure is very high and of course, it suppresses the formation of gas bubbles and that results in yielding a higher material removal rate. So, whatever gas bubbles are formulated here. Uh, get suppressed and uh, because already the pressure ambient pressure is very high and therefore, slightly higher MRR is desirable in this particular zone because you are suddenly squeezing the electrolyte into a very small area region thus increasing the pressure likelihood of increasing of pressure. So, whatever gas has been dissolved from the previous zone sort of uh, bubbles out of the system. So, whatever chemical or uh, electrochemical reactions which is the principal removal mechanism in zone 2 here takes place between the work and the, the tool, it may result in the formation of a passive layer particularly on the workpiece surface. Okay. So, here in this particular surface there may be a passive layer which is a deposit because it is already very small and then there are diffusion limitations and the debris which has been generated here goes into the cell and comes back once you know the uh, wheel rotates and the next cell comes in place. So, there is always a formation of a passive layer because of debris redeposition in this particular zone 2. Of course, because the abrasive grains are also in contact. So, when this grain moves with the motion of the wheel in a direction opposite to that of the feed of the workpiece, there is a tendency of scratching the workpiece particularly the surface layer which has been formulated. So, whatever reactive oxides uh, sorry non reactive oxides are formulated here 
because of maybe deposit of debris or deposit of some electrochemical products from this flow cell they are being scratched. So, there is a removal of that layer okay, the passive layer formulated here or the passive layer because of any other electrochemical deposition as such which is taking place in this region. So, at the end of the day when this zone 2 is crossed uh, the surface is kind of brought back to fresh because there is already a scratched mechanical action initiated by these abrasive grains towards the end of zone 2 and there is a general removal of the non reactive oxide layer. Finally, uh, the zone 3 comes into picture where there is mostly electrochemical removal because there is a field which exists there is no direct contact of course, between the grains sticking out of the wheel and the surface, but then because of the ambient field and the presence of the electrolyte which in self has been thrown uh, by the grinding wheel forward uh, there is always a tendency of the material to remove in a electrochemically dissoluting mode. So, it starts at the point where the wheel lifts uh, from the work surface point here maybe right, where the there is a separation between the uh, grain grinding grain and the surface. And uh, suddenly there is a pressure release also which happens in this particular zone, because uh, earlier uh, the electrolyte was being trapped as a flow cell between the work piece and these two grains and the wheel on the other side and suddenly the, the electrolyte has been thrown into the open. So, therefore, this zone sort of contributes to the removal of those scratches or burrs which have been formulated because of the mechanical abrasion in zone 2. So, those burrs are eliminated in zone 3. So, that is uh, about the basic process of uh, electrochemical grinding there are certain other aspects associated with the, the machine tool as such. Uh, it has to be a rotor driven tool, tool as any other normal grinding process, because there has to be relative rotation between the electrochemical wheel and the workpiece surface. Uh, so, this uh, slide here illustrates uh, briefly how the electrochemical grinding machine tool would look like. So, you have a workpiece here for example and uh, then you have a grinding spindle and this is the grinding wheel okay. and there is a flow of electrolyte past the grinding wheel. So, you are flowing the electrolyte very close to this wheel here and the wheel starts working on the surface the work piece surface by positioning relatively with respect to a high precise work table and whatever uh, material comes out as debris or gases in the electrolyte is stored here in the tank which uh, is again reused by a set of filtration uh, techniques and pumping techniques. And there is of course, a power supplied between the work piece and the grinding tool uh, to ensure the electrochemical transport. So, by and large the following things need to be taken care of uh, for designing such a system. Uh, the first thing is that material the, uh, the machining area uh, should be made as non corrosive uh, as possible because it is in direct touch with the, the electrolyte. So, things like let us say the work piece holder or even the tool holder here right here has to be as uh, non corrosive as possible. Power must be supplied through the spindle either with the help of brushes or mercury coupling. Okay. So, there has to be a continuous uh, power. So, this right here probably is the, uh, the arrangement for the brush. So, there is always tendency of the brushes to go past the rotating spindle. So, that there is continuous supply ensured on the wheel okay, from the power uh, supply side there should not be any break. And if you have mercury in between which uh, sort of uh, is a metal which is of you know uh, it has a tendency to cohesce more uh, than adhere. So, it basically formulates a thick layer between the outer which is uh, the stator and the rotor which is the inner spindle. Okay. So, there is a film of mercury which is continuously able to um, give a pathway to the flow of electrons and mercury coupling is always better than the brush contacts, because brushes may get damaged or depreciated with time, but mercury owing to its cohesiveness can get reformulated as a continuous thin film between the stator and the rotor. Okay. 
So, people prefer normally mercury coupling in comparison to the brushes although it is expensive. And of course, uh, one thing you have to ensure is that the probability of short circuiting during ECG uh, should not uh, occur in the remaining part of the circuit, because uh, uh, the, the ECG as such is a process which by virtue of uh, the way it has been defined uh, is uh, very, um, you know, very uh, less probable to the short circuiting, okay. because uh, the it is a self material removal process as such. So, after the dissolution has taken place, after the debris has get gotten deposited, after there is a formation of a uh, non reactive oxide layer, there is always a tendency of uh, the material to get freshly exposed. So, therefore, uh, there is a tendency of this uh, ECG uh, to not really have any uh, short circuit, okay. because short circuits typically formulate when there is a chance of uh, the metal of the metal binding of the grinding wheel coming in close uh, operation to the uh, the surface. Here, you are removing the surface. There is mechanical abrasion, which is following always the electrochemical uh, deposition. So, there is a very less tendency of the ECG process as such to deposit a residue, which may somehow interconnect uh, the work piece to the, the matrix of the abrasive wheel. And short circuit is by and large uh, self avoided in the ECG process. Uh, so, therefore, you have to be extra careful about designing circuitry. So, there should not be any issues about short circuiting. Uh, of the circuitry as such, particularly when you are talking about the grinding wheel getting in clo close proximity to the workpiece holder, you should avoid uh, any such systems which would provide uh, any shorting between the two. So, four kinds of different uh, ECG performed operations can be performed, uh, they can be cylindrical grinding can be form grinding or can be surface grinding and internal grinding. And uh, a variety of component shapes, complex shapes can result from these four processes, out of which uh, the cylindrical grinding probably is the slowest process. And uh, that is because there is always a, a limited area of contact between the, the tool surface and the, the machine surface as such. Okay. So, there is always al almost a line of contact. Uh, cylindrical grinding is done when there is a, a grinding roller, which is moving with a straight line contact with another work piece. So, the zone of machining is very small and uh, therefore, there is a tendency to the, of the dissolution rate to also fall down, because of a line contact or probably at the most a very small surface area in contact during uh, the contact between the tool and the work piece. So, uh, therefore, the ECG is slowest when you talk about cylindrical grinding and among all the processes the surface grinding happens to be the fastest process, because uh, the whole surface is in contact as such. So, that is uh, uh, some information about the ECG machine. Of course, uh, you know you can further add some um, additional actions to improve the efficiency of the ECG process and one of them is that uh, the wear can be controlled of the grinding wheel by oscillating motion provided onto the workpiece. So, if you have the workpiece moving from one side to another and uh, uh, you are having the grinding action by rotation motion may be the clockwise manner or even the anti clockwise manner, it is always um, a high efficiency system. So, you can oscillate, so that there is always a tendency of the work zone to come back and forth. Uh, between this grinding wheel and uh, that way by the frequency of the oscillation as such the material uh, or the material surface can be smoother uh, based on and and the, and also the wheel wear rate can also be reduced because of that uh, because um, in one motion you are typically uh, going in the direction of the feed and in the other motion you are going away from the direction of the feed so, the abrasive action of one cycle is kind of a dressing action for the other cycle. 
Okay. So, it is a self dressing mechanism which happens. So, uh, the E C surface uh, uh, grinding typically necessitates the work piece to reciprocate with respect to the, the tool. For example, this is a tool which is shown where you can see this stage here which is containing the work piece and it has a rectilinear motion in both the x and minus x direction okay, as the tool moves in clock or anti clockwise direction. So, in the E C internal grinding and uh, form grinding, uh, the basic concept is same as the conventional internal and form grinding operations. Uh, the only thing is that you are using a conducting ECG wheel and electrolyte, okay. so the material removal mechanism has uh, connotations which have been already discussed. There are some other associated benefits of the ECG process, one of them is that as I told you the ECG wheel is made up of metals. So, instead of a resinoid uh, you know combination with particles, uh, you are actually having a metal wheel uh, combining uh, the, the metal wheel or making the metal of the resin, uh, the wheel as the resinoid okay, and the, uh, the abrasive grain sticking out of that metal wheel. So, therefore, uh, there is a tendency of those wheels to have long lasting effects, uh, because resinoid otherwise can needs a, a frequent amount of dressing which this process will not. So, the ECG wheel again commonly uses materials that are copper, brass, nickel or copper impregnated resins for uh, the purpose of uh, you know making the grinding wheel. And uh, such metal bonded wheels are effectively dressed using uh, the electrochemical process. So, there does exist a dressing option here, but it has to be very less frequently used. And uh, the only thing which is needed for dressing is that because in the ECG process you have electrochemical dissolution. So, you have to just reverse the dissolution. So, that the resolution happens from the tool side rather than the workpiece side. So, if it is a copper impregnated resin, then you make uh, sure that there is the, the electrolyte which goes in dissolves the copper with respect to a workpiece which displaces copper from its metal state into the solution. So, it is the reverse of the uh, ECM process as such. Okay. So, it is the, the machining on the tool that you are talking about, but the dressing has to be in an electrochemical sense which is done in this particular operation. So, the commonly used uh, abrasive uh, that is used is alumina, grid size about 60 to 80 and uh, as we have already indicated the ECG does not need frequent wheel dressing and uh, because uh, already there is a mechanical action followed by electrochemical dissolution action which takes away the debris or carries away the degree. So, I think we are probably at the end of this uh, lecture and we have completed two processes which are associated processes the electrochemical drilling and electrochemical grinding. Uh, we would also like to explore a little bit of electro stream drilling, which is important for high aspect ratio, hole formation etcetera in uh, MEMS structures, following which we will give some practical applications from the industry where ECM is used for micro manufacturing or micro systems fabrication. Thank you.